Welcome everybody. Looks like everyone's here. And so let's just start by explaining what we'll be doing during this hour. So what we're doing is chanting or reciting, there's no melody, but <laughs> we're, we're reciting this prayer, chanting the names of, Man, of Noble Manjushri. Okay, so if you look at the text here, it has the uh, Indian Sanskrit name, the Tibetan name, and the English name. <coughs> So you see there are these bolded headings when, you go, when we go down through the text and then a bunch of verses. So what we'll do is when we read it together, just read the verses and not those bolded uh, titles because th those are the titles of the sections. Okay, and then there's a bit of uh, some kind of uh, what you can call like a mantra or a dharani, these Sanskrit words. So we'll, we'll read those too, but don't worry if you pronounce it correctly because no one here knows the correct pronunciation anyway. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and so what, then the, the next thing we'll do, oh, and so when this is completed, then we'll read together this uh, prayer for the swift return of Lama Zopa Rinpoche on the papers that were handed out. Okay, so then we'll read that together one time or oh, however many times we feel like it. Okay, uh, so then the next thing is to uh, talk about why we're reciting this, right? So why are we reciting this? Uh, in order to achieve complete, unsurpassed, manifest awakening, which is a um, state where there is no more uh, chance. No more chance for suffering to arise. No more chance for ignorance to cloud our minds. Okay, so that's what the Buddha did, right? The Buddha achieved that state. So we're reciting this prayer in order to achieve the same state that the Buddha did 2,500 years ago. And uh, why does it have the power to do that? Well, it's one cause, right, that will, <laughs> that will help us to achieve that. Um, but today is a special day, right? It's the day of Thabhap Duchen, the day of descending from the heaven of the 33. Thabhap means just descending from the heavens, right? So what happened on this day? Well, the Buddha, our teacher, Shakyamuni Buddha, he descended from the heaven of the 33, where he was teaching his mother, now, now we reborn as a god in this heavenly realm, or a deva, uh, some kind of other non-human being in this realm. He was teaching her, teaching her the dharma that he had realized, and she achieved the state of an arhat, someone freed herself from the cycle of existence, from ignorance and suffering. Okay, so that is why this is a day that we continue to commemorate. It's, it's Buddhist Mother's Day, right? <laughs> the Buddha, uh, his mother passed away when he was only seven days old, and so she got reborn in this realm. And so after the Buddha achieved awakening, he went to teach her. So it's a, a day of commemorating the Buddha's, what? Repaying the kindness that his mother had showed him by giving him his life, right? So that's, that's why um, it's a special day. And if you wonder, well, how does a day become special? Why can one day of the year multiply our virtue, our merit, meaning like the potential of our good actions? Well, it's, it's just the nature of things is that they're interdependent, right? So there's, you know, many, many conditions that uh, make any given action become positive, become a cause for happiness, for enlightenment. And so on this day, right, it's just like the year is a cycle, it cycles around, and there's certain days where, you know, the Buddha did something extra special, or there was a special event. And then if you just think of it sort of, sort of sociologically, you know, the community of Buddhist practitioners, well, when you make a day, a holy day, a special day, then many, many, many people make extra effort, right, to do positive actions, to do prayers. So. We have that collective effort, right? And that itself helps to multiply the, the power of the good actions we do, right? With a collective effort. So even just being here together, right? In this room with many other people, all focused in the same direction, also helps to multiply and increases the power of our, our virtuous activity. Okay, so we're doing this together on a special day. Millions of people around the world are doing other special, you know, making extra effort to do virtuous things. So we can uh, see how, and then of course the Buddha having this, kind of marking this day with, with his own action of repaying his mother's kindness, and then of course coming back down to us 
right? He came, this is the day he actually descended back down to our world so that his disciples here could continue to learn from him, which we are all very grateful for as well. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is just sit quietly for about five minutes. Okay, so generate, uh, you can just watch your breath, but also think about, again, the motivation, the motivation for why you're here, meaning mainly that you want to make a clear, conscious thought in your mind that I'm doing this prayer not just for myself alone, but so that the world can benefit, so that there can be peace right, throughout humanity, and ultimately all living beings can achieve complete freedom from suffering. Okay, so spend five minutes in silence.
Okay, so the general motivation we've thought about and cultivated, and then specifically, the main reason for this particular prayer is because it was advised by His Holiness the Dalai Lama to recite this prayer as a condition to help um, identify and bring the incarnation or the next rebirth of Lama Zopa Rinpoche, okay, who uh, passed passed away from his current, his form uh, earlier this year. And so when we request, we can also think about, right? I mean, when we uh, recite this prayer, we can also think about requesting Lama Zopa Rinpoche to return in a new form. And the reason that's important is because well, he's our teacher, right? Lama Zopa Rinpoche uh, was a great Lama, great teacher who helped to shape the minds of millions of people and shape their minds and, and our minds into a more virtuous state. And so we need teachers. We need him to come back so that we can understand how to practice the path to enlightenment. Otherwise, we can read books, but the teachers, the Lamas, they are what brings the books to life. Okay, so without without him and without um, the great teachers who have deep experience of the Dharma, then uh, then we're lost. Then we won't be able to understand how to achieve the states that they've achieved. Okay, so also holding that motivation in, in mind as we as we begin the recitation. So I'll start just reading the title and then go into the verses. <clears throat> Chanting the names of noble Manjushri from the words of the Buddha in Indian language Arya Manjushri Nama Sankiti in Tibetan Papa Jambel Gitse Yandakurjava in English chanting the names of the noble Manjushri. Homage to the ever youthful Manjushri. Then Vajradhara, ever glorious, supreme subduer of the hard to tame, the hearer conquering the triple world, the Vajra lord and master of all secrets, with eyes wide open like white lotuses, his face just like a lily in full bloom, while shaking in his hand repeatedly a Vajra of the highest excellence, accompanied by countless Vajrapanis, with fierce Features such as fierce, turbulent blows, subduers of the hard to tame, heroes appearing with heroic, hideous forms, brandishing in their hands their mighty Vajras, the tips of which emit intensive light, great benefactors to all living beings, through skill, through insight, and through great compassion, with pleased and happy attitudes, with joy, their bodies those of wrathful deities, protectors who assist the Buddha's deeds, their bodies bowing reverentially, paid homage to the true awakened one, protector, blessed one, Tathagata, and joining his two palms respectfully, he said before the Lord the following, O omnipresent Lord, for my well-being, with due concern for me and for my sake, that I may reach complete awakening upon the basis of illusion's net, and for the sake of every living being, sunk deep into the mud of ignorance, their thoughts disturbed by various afflictions, so that they may attain the highest fruit. May you, the most supreme awakened one, the blessed one, the world's guru, the teacher, who knows the great Samaya's reality, aware of wishes and abilities, reveal to us the great name, chanting of the wisdom body of the blessed one, the great Ushnisha, master of all speech, the self-arising wisdom emanation, the wisdom deity called Manjushri. These names with meaning both profound and vast, of great significance, unmatched, serene, with goodness at their start, middle, and end, proclaimed by Buddhas of the eons past and to be taught by Buddhas yet to come, and taught not once but time and time again by all the Buddhas of the present age, which were respectfully recited in illusion's net the Tantra most supreme by multitudes of mighty Vajrapanis, the joyous guardians of secret mantras. Just this I shall uphold with firm resolve until I reach my final liberation, so that I may become, O great protector, the bearer of the Buddha's every secret, 
And this I shall reveal to living beings, according to each one's capacity, in order that afflictions may be quelled, so ignorance may fully be dispelled. With this request to the Tathagata, the master of all secrets, Vajrapani, his body bowed, his palms politely joined, then stood before the Lord devotedly. And so the Blessed One, Lord Shakyamuni, the best of men, the fully awakened one, extending from his mouth his handsome tongue, a tongue unmatched in both its breadth and length, displaying a gentle smile to living beings, a smile that fills the threefold world with light, that tames the enemy, the four Maras, that ends unwanted birth in all three forms, his voice melodious like that of Brahma, completely filling all the triple world, replied as follows to the Lord of Secrets, to Vajrapani, strongest of the strong, that you, abounding in supreme compassion and aiming to assist all living beings, are willing and prepared to hear from me this evil quelling, purifying chanting, the chanting of the names so filled with meaning of Manjushri's embodiment of wisdom. How truly excellent, O Vajradhara! How excellent of you, O Vajrapani! And so I shall, O Master of all secrets, reveal just that to you most splendidly. With single-minded focus, listen well. How excellent, responded Vajrapani. So truly excellent, O Blessed One. And then the Blessed One, Lord Shakyamuni, surveyed in full the family great with mantras, the family of the vidyas and the mantras, the family that is threefold by its nature, the family of and yet beyond the world, the family great and brightening the world, the foremost family of Mahamudra, and so the family great with great Vishnishas. And then about the Lord of Speech he spoke, these verses which include six kingly mantras, which manifest from non-duality, which bear the quality of non-arising. And so he is the fully the blessed one, the Buddha. Awakened fully, born of the letter A, -A he is the letter A, -A the foremost phoneme, the foremost, supreme most syllable, with meaning great, arising from great vital force, unborn, beyond expression, based on words or speech, the foremost cause of every form of speech, the shining forth of every kind of language, great feast who takes the form of great passion, producing bliss in every single sentient being, great feast who takes the form of great anger, great enemy of every mental poison, Great feast who is by nature great delusion, delusions vanquisher for deluded minds. Great feast who is in essence great fury, great adversary to all furiousness. Great feast who takes the form of great desire, who vanquishes desire in all forms. He is great carnal lust, he is great bliss, he is great happiness, he is great joy. With great appearance, bearing forms supreme, with great complexion, marked by great physique, with great renown, the great munificent one, his mandala voluminous and great, the bearer of the mighty sword of wisdom, the foremost gold for taming great afflictions, possessing great renown, his glory great, his brightness great, his luster most supreme, most wise upholder of the great illusion, fulfiller of the great illusion's aims, and raptured by the great illusion's rapture, the great illusion's great illusionist, the foremost lord of great munificence, supreme upholder of great discipline, intense supporter of great tolerance, with valor rooted in great diligence, samadhi resting through great meditation, endowed with bodies flowing with great wisdom, both great in strength and great in skillful means, a brimming ocean filled with vows and knowledge, by nature great in kindness, limitless, the foremost mind enriched by great compassion, of great insight, of great intelligence, great dexterous one with methods ever great, commanding powers and great miracles, with driving force supreme, with speed unmatched, renowned great lord of foremost majesty, most valorous owing to his great might, destroying the massive mountain of becoming, 
unyielding, holding strong a massive Vajra, great, terrifying Lord, the great, cruel one, provoking fear in great and daunting creatures, protector as the greatest of all Vidyas, a guru as the greatest of all mantras, traversing well the Mahayana's path, himself the Mahayana's foremost way. He is Mahavarochana, the Buddha, great sage, observing great intensive silence, arising from the great mantra way. He is at heart the great mantra way, accomplished in the ten paramitas, having the ten paramitas as home, in whom the ten paramitas are pure, for whom the ten paramitas are means, protector reigning over all ten grounds, residing steadily on all ten grounds, made pure in nature by the tenfold knowledge, maintaining purity through tenfold knowledge, with tenfold forms intent on tenfold content, with tenfold strength pervasive lord of sages, achieving every aim for every being, endowed with tenfold mastery supreme, beginningless complexity devoid, by nature pure reality in essence, unwavering a speaker of the truth, with speech and actions perfectly aligned, a teacher of the non-dual truth, non-dual, atop reality's most lofty peak. With selflessness, his wild lions roar, instilling fear in deer-like misled seekers. With journeys fruitful, traveling everywhere, as swift as thought in all tatakathas, a victor, slayer of foes, triumphant lord, a universal king with forces great. Assembly head, instructor for assemblies, assembly lord, assembly chief, the ruler, most influential, bearing precious burdens, no other bound his way, the greatest way. The lord of speech, the master of expression, most skilled in words, adept with language, truthful, with boundless words, the teacher of the truth, providing teachings on the fourfold truth. Not coming back, not turning round, Rhino, the leader of the Pratyeka Buddhas, gone forth by going forth in different ways, the single cause of all great elements. Arhat Bhikshu, defilements exhausted, devoid of passion, master of the senses, arrived at comfort, met with security, for he, having cooled down, is free from stains, equipped in full with knowledge and its base, a Sugata, best knower of the world, not thinking me, not clinging on to mine, established in the system of two truths, upon the edge of cyclic life's far shore, with deeds accomplished, resting on the bank, emerged from untainted lone awareness, with sword-like insight ever penetrating, the sun, the Dharma king, the noble Dharma, supreme illuminator of the world, the Dharma lord, the sovereign of the Dharma, the teacher of the path to excellence, accomplishing all goals, fulfilling aims, completely free from wants of any kind, bereft of thought, a non-depleting source, the Dharma source, supreme beyond decay, enriched by merit, merits gathering, unique, great wisdom, 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 rich, aware of what exists and what does not, while gathering the twofold gathering, eternal yogin, king of everywhere, the object and the mind of concentration, the master of intelligent reflection, for by oneself alone is he experienced, immovable, the ultimate beginning, the holder of the three enlightened bodies, the Buddha formed of five embodiments, the omnipresent made of five wisdoms, his diadem with five awakened ones, with all five eyes maintaining non-attachment, the great progenitor of all the Buddhas, the Buddhas emanate and foremost son, arising from the world of true insight, the sourceless dharma source, existence ending, comprised of vajras, holy, dense, and firm, the newborn sovereign ruler of the world, emerging from the sky, the self arisen, a massive blaze of knowledge and of insight, illuminating beacon of great light, a lamp of wisdom shining brilliantly, a light for beings, a lantern unto wisdom, with energy supreme, most radiant, the Vidya king, the greatest mantra's lord, the mantra king, achieving noble aims, the great Ushnisha, marvelous Ushnisha, the lord of space, revealer of all things, the best embodiment of every Buddha, with eyes the joy of every living being, creator manifesting varied forms, great sage deserving praise, deserving worship, 
a mantra born unto the triple family, upholding mantras of the foremost pledge, the greatest bearer of the triple gem, who teaches all three peerless vehicles, with snare unfailing, most victorious, the snatcher ever great, the Vajra snare, the Vajra hook, the snare of excellence, called Vajra Bharava, he is terrific, six-faced, the king of anger, hideous, six-eyed, six-armed, the ever-powerful, bearing his terrible things, a skeleton, hala hala, a hundred faces proud, the Yama killer, ruling obstacles, instilling fear with Vajra impetus, the Vajra hearted, famous for his Vajra, with belly large, with Vajras of illusion, the Vajra born, the sovereign of the Vajra, akin to space, his core comprised of Vajras, unmoving, haughty with his single dreadlock, his clothes and elephants raw hide, still moist, the great terrific one who cries ha ha, who screams he he, instilling fervent fear. His laugh, a screeching laugh, a booming laugh. He is the Vajra laugh, the mighty howl. He is the notable sattva, Vajra sattva, the Vajra sovereign lord, the highest bliss, the Vajra's wrathfulness, the highest joy, intoning hums of Vajra humkara, with Vajra arrows serving as his weapon, his sword comprised of Vajra slashing all, upholding every Vajra, Vajra bearing, with just a single Vajra ending strife, with eyes like Vajra fire, truly dreadful, with hair that's like a Vajra set ablaze, immersion of the Vajra, great immersion, with eyes like Vajra's eyes a hundredfold, with Vajra hairs that sprout upon his body, his unique figure marked by Vajra hairs, with nails advancing, Vajra's at their tips, with skin that's solid, Vajra's core, the splendid master donning Vajra garlands, adorned with Vajra fashioned ornaments, with booming voice, his laughter crying, ha ha, six syllabled producing Vajra rumbles. Great Manjugosha, sound supremely loud, a roar unique unto the threefold world, the voice that reaches every bound of space, preeminent amongst all voice endowed. He is a being who's fully realized truth, reality its peak in selflessness, supreme in propagating emptiness, unspoken teaching both the deep and vast. The Dharma conch emitting piercing sound, the Dharma gong with lasting resonance, arriving at unbounded liberation. He is the Dharma drum in all directions, without a form, with handsome form, supreme, replete with forms, diverse, comprised of mind, with splendor shining through his every form, with all reflections under his control. Invincible, renowned as Lord Supreme, the Lord Supreme who rules the threefold world, abiding on the noble's lofty path, great source of flourishing the Dharma's crown, with youthful form, unique unto all worlds, the elder, senior, father of all beings, adorned with thirty-two auspicious marks, most beautiful, most handsome in all worlds, the teacher teaching mundane good and knowledge, the teacher to all beings, most confident, the world's most trusted guide, protector, savior, the refuge unsurpassed, the guardian, with rich enjoyments filling all space, the knowledge ocean of omniscient beings while smashing through the shell of ignorance and breaking through the cage of cyclic existence, cyclic life and thorough queller of intensive affliction, arriving at samsara's opposite shore, his crown, the crown of wisdom consecration, his ornaments comprising perfect Buddhas, the soother of the pain of threefold pain, the ender of the trio ending free, arriving at the threefold liberation, completely free of every obscuration, having achieved equality sky-like, beyond the stains of every last affliction, aware of timelessness in all three times, most eminent amongst all sentient beings, the crown amongst those crowned with noble virtues, completely free from every kind of substrate, established firmly on the path of space, a splendid wish-fulfilling jewel in hand, the best of all that's precious, omnipresent, great wish-fulfilling tree, most plentiful, the greatest of all great auspicious vases, fulfilling the aims of living beings, a doer, an ally, most beloved to all creatures, aware of good and bad, aware of times, the omnipresent knower of the pledges, upholding pledges, conscious of occasions, awake to varied aptitudes and beings with expertise and threefold liberation, 
with virtues, knowing virtues, knowing dharma, auspicious source of all auspiciousness, of all auspicious things, the most auspicious, great splendor, glory, good, most prosperous, great reassurance, foremost liberation, great joyousness, the highest form of pleasure, abundance, reverence, action, venerable, great happiness, the noble lord of splendor, the greatest grantor of all wishes wished for, the highest source of refuge, refuge granting, the fearsome enemy of potent danger, alleviating danger in all forms, with tufts of hair, with plumes of luscious hair, with matted hair, with matted locks, court tied, five faced with five hair tufts, his head well crowned, his head adorned with garlands of five strands, upholding great observances, head shaven, the foremost of observances, chaste student, with great austerities, perfectly fully. He is the greatest bather, Gotama. A Brahmin, Brahma, knower of Brahman, arrived in full at Brahma Nirvana, awakening its branches, liberation, release, complete tranquility, quiescence. Nirvana, peacefulness, tranquility, approaching graceful entry to Nirvana, the culmination, ending pain and pleasure, the state devoid of passion, free of from substrates. Beyond defeat, unmanifest, unmatched, not making manifest, appearance free, pervasive, timeless, fully omnipresent, minute, beyond defilement, seed free, unstained, devoid of passion, passionless, controlling humors, free from every illness, by nature most awakened, fully awake, omniscient, knowing everything supreme, beyond reality as consciousness, pristine awareness, bearing non-dual form. Beyond conceptualization, effort free, acting as Buddhas do in every age. The Buddha endless and beginningless, the Buddha at the start devoid of sequence, with wisdom as his only eye unstained, Tathagata with wisdom as his body, the sovereign of all language, great debater, the king of discourse, best of orators, the best and greatest of communicators, the unassailable, the lion of speech with universal vision, true delight, with fire garlands, handsome to behold, the endless knot, most radiant, great luster, with shining grace and hand providing light, the best and foremost of all great physicians, unequaled in removing thorns of pain, a tree providing medicine for all, a foe opposing every malady, the lovely crowning jewel of all three worlds, a cluster of the stars most glorious, the end of space in all its ten directions, the hoisting high of Dharma's victory flag, sharing one large umbrella with the world, with love and kindness as his mandala, the celebrated lotus lord of dance, pervasive with his precious parasol, the blazing energy of all the Buddhas, with bodies fully shared by all the Buddhas, the highest union formed with all the Buddhas, the single teaching taught by all of the Buddhas, most glorious with Vajra Ratna's blessing, the highest sovereign lord of Sarva Ratna, the king supreme of Sarva Lokeshvara, the lord on high of Sarva Vajradhara, the quintessential mind of Sarva Buddha, residing in the mind of every Buddha, the greatest body born by every Buddha, the lovely speech enriching every Buddha, the scorching brightness from the Vajra sun, the stainless luster from the Vajra moon, great passion of the passionless and others, with multicolored rays that brightly blaze, the perfect Buddha's perfect Vajra posture, retaining for all beings the Buddha's Dharma, the Lotus Buddha's celebrated son, the knowledge treasurer for the omniscient, the sovereign king controlling all illusions, the foremost master of the Buddha's spells, called Vajra Chikshna, sword supremely mighty, completely pure, the highest syllable, Atop pain's remedy, the Mahayana, with Vajra Dharma as his mighty weapon, with Vajra depth, renowned as Jina Jik, with Vajra thought, aware of how things are, perfecting all perfections completely, adorned by all the grounds of bodhisattvas, the selflessness of pure phenomena, with luster that is a moonlight unto knowledge, with great endeavors as illusory nets, the foremost master ruling every tantra, endowed in full with every Vajra posture, completely furnished with all wisdom bodies, completely good with intellect supreme, the embryo of earth sustaining beings, great embryo from which all Buddhas form with emanation circles most diverse, the highest nature of all entities, supportive of the nature of all things, 
with goals for all, with dharmas unarisen, supportive of the nature of all dharmas, with full awareness of phenomena, in but an instant as the wisest sage, with vivid realization of all dharmas, he is a sage, the greatest intellect, the vanquisher of hosts of evil spirits, unwavering, completely pure in nature, grasping the wakefulness of perfect Buddhas, the direct realization of all Buddhas. He is the flame of wisdom, luminous, the great fulfiller of desired aims, the purifier of all evil states, the greatest of all living beings protector, the earnest liberator of all creatures, unrivaled knight in battle with afflictions, humiliating ignorance, his foe, the celebrated mind of am amorousness, endowed with forms heroic and repulsive, the dancer moving to and fro his hundreds of lengthy arms while setting down his stride, the dancer spreading through the whole of space and filling it with Srimat's hundred arms, stood tall atop the surface of the earth, the soul of just one foot pervading all, stood atop the summit of the world, the nail of his big toe suppressing all, whose aim is one, whose aim is non-dual dharma, whose aim is ultimate beyond destruction, whose mind consists in groups of consciousness with varied objects, forms, and cognizance, amused with every object of existence, a mind of passion, loving emptiness, transcending worldly passion and the like, with great enjoyment for the threefold world, with fair complexion, white like pristine clouds, with radiance like beams from autumn moons, with luster rivaling the morning suns, with nails emitting light of crimson red, whose handsome crown has sterling sapphires, whose hair has tips of sapphire deep blue, whose glory from the light of his great jewel, adorned with emanations of the Buddhas, worldly realms, his strength the four miraculous powers, reality with mindfulness supreme, Samadhi, king of fourfold mindfulness, infused with sense from bloom of Bodhi's branches and an ocean of Tathagata virtues, with knowledge of the eightfold path's true way, with knowledge of the path of perfect Buddhas, the great attachment of all living beings, attachment free, comparable to space. When springing up in every creature's mind, he is for every being as swift as mind, aware of all the aptitudes of beings while captivating every creature's mind with insight into aggregated natures, himself with fully pure five aggregates, atop the peak of every going forth, most skilled in going forth in every way, established on all paths of going forth, the teacher of all forms of going forth, uprooting all becoming with twelve links, endowed with purity in all twelve forms, is formed the way of fourfold noble truth, with realization of the eightfold knowledge, with meaning of the truths in twelvefold form, aware of suchness and its sixteen forms, with true awakening in twenty forms, awakened fully, knowing all, supreme, dispatching countless sets of some ten million embodiments of emanating Buddhas, the final realization of all moments, who knows each moment's object for all minds, and manifesting for the sake of all beings the meats derived from varied vehicles, gone forth by way of all three vehicles, remaining in the single vehicle's fruit, with purified afflictive spheres at heart, annihilating every karmic sphere, arrived atop dry land from flooding oceans, emerged from yoga's perilous dark grove, released from general minor incomplete, afflictions and their latent tendencies, with insight, means, and foremost empathy, achieving fruitful aims for living beings, abiding object-free through all perceptions, with consciousness as object with cessation, with every being the object of his mind, with knowledge that's the mind of all the Buddhas, residing in the mind of every being, having become their mind's equality and satisfying the mind of every being, he is for every being great inner joy. Confusion free regarding points of doctrine, completely free from error in all its forms, he's thinking free from doubt, his object revealed, his object all three purities by nature. Throughout three times, the con content of five skandhas, discerning clearly each and every moment, awakening in but a single moment, his basic nature equal to all Buddhas, with body, body list, the best of bodies, with realization of the peak of bodies, displaying his form in every possible way, he is the greatest stone, the precious gem. 
What all the perfect Buddhas are to know, the Buddha's unsurpassed awakening, devoid of syllables, yet born of mantra, arising from great mantra's threefold family, the father to the meaning of all mantras, with the greatest bindu, void of syllables, with five great syllables, great empty one, a hundred syllable, devoid of bindu, endowed with every form, yet free from form, supporting half of half of sixteen bindus, transcending every grouping, void of members, sustaining dhyanas, fourth and final peak. Aware of dhyanas, each and every aspect, with knowledge of samadhis, types and families, the best of bodies, body of samadhi, the sovereign king of all enjoyment bodies, the best of bodies, emanation body, the heir to emanations of the Buddhas, with varied emanations everywhere, while benefiting all however needed, the sovereign of the gods, the god of gods, Asura lord, the ruler of immortals, the king of deities, the god's guru, the highest lord of pramatas, pramata, Emerge from cyclic life's imposing forest, in single teacher, guru for all beings, in every well-known world in all directions, the eminent bestower of the Dharma, concealed by armor made of loving kindness, well shielded by the shield of empathy, with wisdom sword in hand, with bow and arrow, concluding war with ignorance and clicious, the Mara's enemy and tamer hero, eliminating threats from all four Maras, defeating all the armies of the Maras, a guide for living beings, the perfect Buddha, Deserving homage, worthy of respect. Deserving reverence, always honorable. Deserving worship, worthy of regard. The highest guru, ever venerable. Traversing all three worlds in just one stride. His step extending past the bounds of space. With knowledge of the three, well-versed and pure. With sixfold higher knowledge and recall. The Bodhisattva and Mahasattva. With great power, great transcending worldly life. Perfected by his excellence of insights. Now unified with insights, highest nature. The whole aware of self, aware of other, for fit for all, he is the best of men, surpassing all to which he is compared, supreme most lord, knowing and what's known. The foremost master of imparting dharma, who shows the meaning of the fourfold seal, the most revered among all living beings, engaged in going forth on all three paths. With glory purified by ultimate truth, most fortunate within the threefold world, the celebrated source of all endowments, supreme amongst the glorious Manjushri, homage to you, bone grantor, best of Vajras, O summit of existence, homage to you. Homage to you, whose source is emptiness, O Buddha's awakening, homage to you. O passion of the Buddhas, homage to you. Desire of the Buddhas, I pay you homage. O love of every Buddha, homage to you. The joy of all the Buddhas, I pay you homage. The smile of every Buddha, homage to you. The laugh of all the Buddhas, I pay you homage. O speech of every Buddha, homage to you. The heart of all the Buddhas, I pay you homage. Arisen from non-being, homage to you. Homage to you, arisen from the Buddhas. Arisen from the sky, homage to you. Homage to you, born of pristine wisdom. O net of illusion, homage to you. Homage to you, the Buddha's spectacle. Homage to you, the everything of all. O body of wisdom, homage to you. Om Sarva Dharma Bhava Sabhava Vishuddha Vajra A E Am Ha. Prakrita Parishuddha Sarva Dharma Yad Uta Sarva Tatagat Jnana Kaya Manjushri Parishuddhitam Upadayate A Aya Sarva Tatagat Hridayam Hara Hara Om Hum Shri Bhagavan Jnana Murdiv Vagishvara Mahavaja Sarva Dharma Kaga Namala Suparashuddhi Dharma Datu Jnana Karba A. Then Vajradhara, ever glorious, most pleased and satisfied, with folded palms, prostrated to the Buddha, noble guard, the blessed one, the Lord Tathagata, and with the host of other Vajrapanis of varied forms, the lords of Guyakas, sublime protectors, noble wrathful kings, he then exclaimed this effervescent praise, Protector, we rejoice, how excellent, how excellent what you have clearly taught. Through you our lofty aim has been achieved, which leads to true and full awakening. And so the aims of helpless mundane beings who seek the fruits of perfect liberation. Just this taught in the Maya Jala is the noble path that leads to excellence. With largeness, vastness, and profundity, with meaning great achieving beings' aims, just this comprises every Buddhist sphere. Just this is taught by all awakened ones. This concludes the supreme chanting of the names of the Blessed One, Manjushri, the Wisdom Deity. It was extracted from the Noble Net of Illusion, a Mahayana Tantra in 16,000 parts from its chapter on the Net of Samadhi. It was spoken by the Blessed One Shakyamuni, the Tathagata. So now the prayer on the printed sheet of paper, the prayer for the swift return of Lama Zoba Rinpoche by His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama Tenzin Gyatso. Okay, we'll, we'll recite three times. 
peerless teacher and assembly of the children of the victorious ones, Shravakas and Pratyeka Buddhas, victorious Losang father and sons, along with the lineage masters, all the objects of refuge of infinite lands, please bestow the virtue and goodness of accomplishing this prayer here and now, holding and spreading the Muni's precious and complete teachings through explanation and practice. You wore the armor of patience that is never discouraged, Incomparable, venerable guru, to you I make request. While striving single-pointedly for the sake of the victorious one's teachings, the sole gateway through which all benefit and happiness emerge, and for mother living beings, you suddenly departed to peace. What a great loss. Nevertheless, through the undeceiving truth of the blessings of the ocean of the three jewels and the great waves of bodhicitta of the children of the victorious ones, may the smile of a reincarnation swiftly beam in glory for fortunate disciples. Peerless teacher, assembly of the children of the victorious ones, Shravakas and Pratyaka Buddhas, victorious Losan, father and sons, along with the lineage masters, all the objects of refuge of infinite lands, Please bestow the virtue and goodness of accomplishing this prayer here and now, holding and spreading the Muni's precious and complete teachings. Through explanation and practice, you wore the armor of patience that is never discouraged. Incomparable, venerable Guru, to you I make request, while striving single-pointedly for the sake of the victorious one's teachings, the sole gateway through which all benefit and happiness emerged. And for mother, living beings, you suddenly departed to peace. What a great loss. Nevertheless, through the undeceiving truth of the blessings of the ocean of the three jewels, in the great waves of bodhicitta of the children of the victorious ones, may the smile of a reincarnation swiftly beam in glory for fortunate disciples. Peerless teacher and assembly of the children of the victorious ones, Shravakas and Pratyaka Buddhas, victorious Losan, father and son, along with the lineage masters, all the objects of refuge of infinite lands, please bestow the virtue and goodness of accomplishing this prayer here and now holding and spreading the Muni's precious and complete teachings. Through explanation and practice, you wore the armor of patience that is never discouraged. Incomparable, venerable Guru, to you I make request, while striving single-pointedly for the sake of the victorious one's teachings, the sole gateway through which all benefit and happiness emerge. And for mother living beings, you suddenly departed to peace. What a great loss. Nevertheless, through the undeceiving truth of the blessings of the Victoria Ocean of Three Jewels, in the great waves of bodhicitta of the children of the victorious ones, may the smile of a reincarnation swiftly beam in glory for fortunate disciples. So now make any other dedications that you want to dedicate from the, the merit that was accumulated, the virtuous energy that was accumulated from this recitation of the names of Manjushri. And then praying for Lama Zumpa Rinpoche's swift return. So if you have any other wishes that you want to accomplish and beings that you want to help, Make dedications for them now.
Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon.